Wonderful, wonderful. Welcome, Sherry. It is such a pleasure to have you on our group. We are so excited and the excitement has been building in our group and, uh, for, your, for, our, for our chat because money is a big, um, it's a big one. We, as adults, we live our lives earning money, putting so much focus on money. We see the importance of it. Uh, like we were sh uh, sharing just before, so many adults within our generation are living in debt. And we are unfortunately uh, raising our kids in that scarcity, uh, um, sending them messages about how, um, how poorly we have managed money and we're not really equipped as parents enough, I don't think, to uh, support our kids in how they can manage their money. And unfortunately, schools aren't doing uh, such a great job um, either because we see kids coming, uh, um, beginning lives. I've got an adult 21-year-old um, um, who has had to, to learn in, um, in her own ways and, and make decisions. And I love what she's, what she's doing with it because I didn't do that. I wasn't taught that. Um, I was happy to make money. I didn't know how to save it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that there was a mindset around it, that we have a way of keeping ourselves stuck. There is a number that we can stay stuck in. And um, I didn't know how to spend it. So <laughs> uh, we can't wait to hear about you. Uh, so tell us a little bit about you, Sherry. What, what do you do? Uh, how did you come about doing this work? And you've got seven ways that we can support our kids. I've got one 16-year-old. Um, uh, you say specifically eight, um, that before 18, but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to share this with my 22-year-old as well. So I can't wait to hear all about it. And yes. our group done. So welcome again. And thank you for the gems you're about to share into our group. Oh, thank you, Yolanda. So, um, yeah, I'm Sherry Dumbrell. I grew up um, in, I was my parents' jackpot. I uh, was born in Las Vegas. And I grew up in San Diego <clears throat> um, up until I was 21. And then I traveled to uh, England. I was there for a couple of years where I met my Aussie husband. And so I've been here. We've been married 33 years. And we have five children. My youngest is 20. And so I was, uh, we decided, and I decided to be a stay-at-home mom. So for 27 of those years, um, I was a stay-at-home mom. And that taught me a lot of skills. It taught me a lot of time management. I, I always enjoyed time management before I became a mom, but I had to be even better at it. And then I also had to be really good at money management because for lots of reasons. One, so that we could take care of the needs of our family. But the other was, is I had a big why. I wanted to save money. And that was to return home to see my family. They live 14,000 miles away. And, and so I had to really um, be good so that I could go home. And usually with my baby. I like how you say be good. So saving money was being good. Yes, and it I was having a plan. Yeah. A why. So I'm just picking these. I don't know if this is your seven ways, but I'm really picking these up. Having a yes. why is so important. Yes. Yeah. In fact, the, the seven and 17, there's 17 money truths to oh. teach your kids before 18. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to just mention, go kind of briefly through those. Um, but yeah, so after 15 years of marriage, we all went home. As a family, that was our first family trip. I, my oldest was 12, my youngest was three. At that point, we were using a budget, a traditional budget. And uh, I realized it wasn't helping us in saving for the future. It kind of told us you should be able to pay your bills if you put this aside, but it was more guessing than anything. It didn't give me that 100% clarity. So, after we got back from the trip, I just started searching online. There has to be a better way than this budgeting thing. And I found the spending plan system. So I started that 19 years ago. 
and loved it. It dramatically changed our families. Was that your life. own? Did you put that together? No, it was from a, uh, a young father who was a school teacher um, up in a Sunshine Coast area. And he was the same. He was really good. And I was a really good budgeter. I mean, I recorded everything and tracked everything. But the past is the past. And budgeting is very heavy on the past. And so the past isn't going to help you plan the future. And, and so he was finding Tell me the about same it. The amount of unforeseen expenses just, just exactly on, you know, exactly. It was my budget out yeah. the window. That's right. And budgets, I, you rarely see a budget that has the six ways that covers the six ways we spend our money. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. And one of those is what you just explained. It's those unexpected things. Okay. Those we buy things. And in fact, I'll just go quickly into what they are. The, the six ways we all spend our money is number one is our weekly expenses, which is food, fuel, fun, and incidentals. Incidentals are your little teeny, teeny emergencies that you need to do um, that may come up during the week. Uh, the second way we spend our money is on the regular predictable expenses or which include bills that happen within a 12 month period. It's all the things that you know it's gonna happen. You know, if you have a gym membership or you get your hair done, it's birthdays, Christmas, those are all predictable. So all those things that you spend your money on. The third area is the things we wanna buy, products. We wanna buy things we need, and then we also buy things we want. Um, at this point is when a lot of people put their head in the sand. Okay, and this is where some budgets kind of stop. The fourth area is repairing things. Okay, we buy things, but we forget that they need repairing, and especially young ones when they get their first car. They think, oh, you know, the car is only $12,000. And then as a parent, you need to say, that's the cheap part. And they say, oh, but I only have to put petrol in it. No, you have to pay insurance and registration. And you have to have tires in a few, every few years and a battery every few years. You have to service it every six months. And so it's all those things. So then when they realize that it's not just paint, buying a car for $12,000. So there's those re maintenance costs. And two, sometimes things just happen like I hit a kangaroo. And guess what? That, that kangaroo money. did not have insurance. No. <laughs> so I had to oh, get from wow. my, and I have an excess. Mm. So luckily I have what I call the big bad wolf account because it protects me from the big bad wolf. You know, the three pigs. You should probably call it the wolf. Big, you should call it the big kangaroo account. It, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's right. I should um, and, and so I had that money because I always have at least 2000 in that big bad wolf account for those unexpected things because things will always happen. Mm -hmm. And as soon as your kid gets, your child gets a car, they need a big bad wolf account mm -hmm. because okay. there will be things that happen. Then the fifth way is replacing things, things that we own eventually need replacing. Sorry, just to go back when you say account, is this little, uh, um, partitions in your bank account that you no, recommend the, us doing? The, no, these these lead up to it. These lead up to it. These are the six ways we spend our money. And then with all the six ways, I have a bank account, effective bank account structure. And all the six ways are, um, are sorted out so that you have that. Um, the bank account structure I teaches, it protects your money from you because we're our worst enemy. Your kids, they're gonna be their own worst enemy. They're gonna steal from themselves. It's not gonna be their, chances are their little brother and sister might check, you know, steal a few dollars out of their wallet, but they're gonna be the ones that are gonna steal from themselves. Mm -hmm. So we have to have a, um, a bank account structure that protects our money from us. And so that's what I, um, that's what I teach. And that's one of the little areas, um, one of the 17 truths is to teach them how to have an effective bank structure because the banks do not teach you that. In fact, they told one of my clients when she said, I want to set my accounts up like this. And they said, where'd you get that? And she goes, oh, for my spending planner. And they said, well, 
that's how we do our bank accounts, but we don't tell our customers that. Mm. Okay. And that's one thing that you have to teach your kids is businesses and companies. Really, when it comes down to it, some of them really are worried more about themselves and their bottom line than about you. And so, of course, they don't want us to be effective with our bank accounts because then they know we're going to muck them up. We're going to overspend. So we're going to need a credit card through them and we're going to need a personal loan and all that stuff. So I teach. You're not even asking the right questions. Well, that's right. People, you know, any young one will be given a a bank account and a savings. Mm -hmm. And I have someone in my current eight-week course that is in her late 40s and she still has one bank account and one savings account. Mm. And every, there's so much in the one bank account. She has her spending money, her food money, her bills, her savings, all this stuff in the one account. So at what point does she know she needs to stop spending? Mm. There's no clarity on it. And so we tend to overspend and that's what the banks want. Where now she has the... Um, effective bank account structure that I teach and just bring so much more clarity and peace. Mm -hmm. And then the last, the replacement one, yeah, that's so important. And I've never seen in a budget, hey, your fridge needs replacing in three years. Let's start saving for it now because it's only going to be dollars a week as opposed to when it happens, you're going to um, do that. Same with your kids. You know, they might have a laptop. They don't last forever. So to have them start saving for their next one, they're not even going to notice that money gone. But when their laptop breaks down, mm -hmm. then they're going to think, oh, poor me, my laptop broke. But is this your repairs and maintenance? That's my replacement. Yeah, there's that replacement. That's the number five one is replacing things that you need. These are the things we need. Mm. Our kids need a laptop usually for their studies or university. We need a fridge. We need a washing machine. Now, luckily, my washing machine I bought 32 years ago, and it's still going. But I've had the money in my long-term replacement account yeah. for 20 years. They it's just sitting there waiting for that washing machine. Washing machine. That's, right. <laughs> that's right. And I just that's just there. And, um, and so that's the fifth one is replacing things. And then the sixth one is those once in a lifetime things. You know, when you get that college education, you don't have to put it on X. You don't have to put it in a loan. You can actually save for it. My son-in-law did. He wasn't a citizen when he moved here from Mexico. They just paid for it. Mm -hmm. yep. And he graduated uh, debt-free. So there's those things, you know, getting married, having kids, going, getting your first car, getting your first home, going on that dream holiday, all those type of things. We need to have a plan. And so what I do, I'm a certified spending planner, is I help people plan, have a plan for all those six things that they're going to spend their money on mm. so that they can know um, they don't have to stress and because we all tend to put our head in the sand and forget the things need re repairing or that things need replacing or we'll just think oh retirement is way off I'm just going to worry about it then so that is what um those six. those are the six um expense types that we need to help our kids understand that there's lots of different ways you need to put your money aside for it's not just all for fun Wonderful. So for our viewers, uh, if you have a question for Sherry, if you're enjoying what uh, Sherry is sh saying, uh, tell us if you're getting some value from what she's sharing with us, put in the comment section, hashtag value. Mm -hmm. If you're watching a replay, hashtag replay. Uh, we would love to interact with you, ask questions if you're watching now, or uh, put in a question and Sherry will come back and um, respond to you. So feel free to reach out and uh, we're going to dive into the um, 17 ways, is that? Yes, yeah. So why is it important that we teach our children? Because money makes your world go round and their world go round or it makes it go pear-shaped. And like I was saying to Yolanda earlier, having debt, consumer debt, and when I say consumer debt, when we get buy things on our credit cards and 
and you know personal loans. As soon as you buy them, the value goes down. You'll never be able to get back that same price, even if you turned around and sold it. Yet, if you have it on debt, it's actually costing you more the longer you have that debt because the interest rate, you're paying interest on it. That's so right. by the time you actually pay that off, it's lost a lot of value, yet you're up here paying for it. And so it's really important to, to teach your children to save, then spend. Um, and that's something that all, and, and that's what I do. I, uh, we have always saved before we spent. It hasn't always been easy. Yeah, but it's how I was raised as well. Exactly, that was the last thing we went uh, we went into, which is what I'm mm -hmm. so glad. But what I realize is that uh, it, uh, with my with my kids, they sometimes don't even know how to spend. So yes. we've got the reverse happening because you want them to be able to replenish, and you want them to not have that just one-sided but I believe it's a good problem to have yeah yeah I was interviewing one of um, my clients and her kids were there their kids were there and I asked them questions and one was a saver one was a spender you have to be both one or the other is not good you have to have a balance of both because you if you a are a saver okay. if you're a saver and you um have all this money and I heard someone in a workshop say to me my fridge is actually not working too well and I have the money, but I just can't spend it. And mm -hmm. I said, you're giving your money too much power. The money is a vehicle to get you what you want in life, what you need and what you want. So we need to be careful not to be, become too good of a saver that we have a hard time spending because we're supposed to enjoy spending. And another reason why we need to teach our kids is as parents, we don't want them to rely on us. Okay. We have our own things and we don't want them to become a burden on us. And we want to teach them to be adults. I always said when I raised my five children, I was raising adults, not children. And we need to do that. Do not enable your kids for, because you just, yeah, we want to, especially women. We and want kids to can kind of then depend on us and not yeah. put aside money for those big expenses. Yeah. And then we feel responsible for them. And we are not budgeted to look after their big expenses or unforeseen ones. And it can be yeah. if we haven't trained our kids efficiently now. Yeah, that's right. And so I'll just go through briefly the 17 money truths we need to teach ourselves before um, were uh, before they leave us. And the, uh, the first one is just money security. To teach them the importance to have security in money. Mm. That money is there to bring us security, not to bring us, uh, you know, it's to protect us. Yeah. Okay? And how would we do this, uh, Sherry? Is it from our own management of money? Is that how we're teaching them? Are we, is there something we can do to support them to have that right path? But I'm sure you're going to. Yes, talk. yes. I actually have, I have um, a, a course which includes the ebook in the course. And, um, and will you and be I sharing can, it in the link down here? Yes. We'll be so I can um, yeah. share and that. And it's got an event coming up. Uh, I do. Please do uh, let the group know. Yes. So I do have an event coming up next. It's the 5th. Uh, May 5th, it's yes. a Thursday at 12 noon. I'll be doing a kids and money webinar, free Wonderful. webinar. Oh, um, I, I love that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so also I have access to, um, I have an online course that I have that's kids and money. And guess what the price is? Mm -hmm. $17.18. Oh, it's really? 17 before 18. It's and it will teach you the 17 truths today. I'm just going to tell you what the 17 points are. Mm -hmm. But if you're interested oh, in that, then I can give you that link and you can just go and purchase that um, or come along to the webinar where I'll we'll go into a lot more detail mm -hmm. about those things. And How exciting oh, for you. us parents. Tell us if you are excited. Put 17 yeah. in the... 18, eight, 17, 18, 17, which is 17 18. before 18. Yeah. 17 steps before they're 18, put 17.18 if you would love the link to come and join Sherry's um, mm -hmm. free webinar happening 
next week. Tell us if you're loving yes. what you're sharing already. Yeah. And then if you can't afford that, you can just go straight on in and you can just purchase that course. Um, so the first one I talked about was money security. We need to teach them that money is there to make us secure, not to give us anxiety, not to give us stress and all the things that money can do to us if we don't use it in the right so way. So important. So much stress yes. around money. Hey, so yes. Yeah. I mean, money controls majority areas of your life, yeah. you know, and so if you can't get your money right, then you're going to have problems in lots of areas of your life. So, yeah, so many relationships break down. Oh, hugely. And that's why I love having couples come um, and into my courses because it is, you have to be unified. And the system that I teach, the spending plan, which goes beyond budgeting, a budget is just two-dimensional income and expenses but a spending plan goes beyond and adds the vital missing dimension of timing or cash flow, the timing of your income, the timing of your expenses. So it makes a dramatic difference and it actually shows you how to pay your bills and you can actually see your future bank statement and see that you're gonna have the money on any day of the year that you can pay your bills mm -hmm. as opposed to the one that comes in the mail, that's useless. It's in the past. That's so right. we need to forget about the past. Every day is a new beginning. And let's plan your future spending. See that it will have, that it's all going to be okay. And you can automate it. It will save you time <clears throat> so that you can have that financial peace. That's what I teach is financial peace. Mm -hmm. I don't like the word financial freedom because to me that thinks that, oh, I have lots and lots of money and I just don't have to work and I can just sit home. And to me, that's not freedom. To me, freedom is is, um, well, to me, peace is just knowing that I can manage the things that I need to in my life and I have some extra to give and I just have the peace of mind that I don't have to worry about money. Yeah. Whether it's a large amount or a little amount, it doesn't matter. I have 17-year-olds. I have ones that are retirees. We all have money and we all need that peace. So I'll just go on to number two is bank accounts, okay? And that's what I was talking about. There's the six expense types, and I explain an effective bank structure, and that's to protect your money from you. Mm. Again, we are our worst thieves. We sabotage, and, and so that. Um, the third one is the flow of your money, you know, um, the flow between the bank accounts. Uh, we also... We stop robbing Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> and in, um, in a spending plan, you become Peter and Paul. You actually become good friends and it's simplified and it really works with knowing how, uh, what expenses come out of what account. So they all have a purpose. Um, the six expense types, which I've already shared with you. Other ones are habits, spending habits and making sure that you get create good spending habits and eliminate those bad spending habits. And these are habits that are so socially acceptable. But we have to, like I was saying, we have to be financially weird, not financially normal. Financially normal people have debt, mm. follow, get caught in the lies of consumerism. I, the main two things I teach is money truth. I teach you truth. I teach you to see your own money truth because there is truth when it comes to your money. Um, it's not a debatable thing. It's this. And then I teach you to be honest. You have to be honest with yourself, with your partner, with your children, with your colleagues, with your peers. Beautiful. You know, too many people out there portraying this image, yet they're staying at home at night lose and sleep because they're trying to impress other people that really they don't even like yeah so yep, we absolutely. need to um understand those good habits consumer goods talking about consumerism you know that's things we buy stuff and all the tricks like I told my daughter when she first got her license do you know what upselling is when you go through the drive through at McDonald's I'd like to have a hamburger oh can you would you like fries with that and so I taught her that and she called me, mom, they just tried to upsell me. And I said, no, I said, yes. And so these are the types of things that we need to mm -hmm. teach our kids, all these little things that they're. They can um, slip into 
Mm. Exactly. Um, borrowing money and credit. Okay, debt. Mm. Really bad. Um, budgets, or as I teach, a spending plan. They need to know how to plan their money, relationships and money. Okay, a huge one. Lots of relationships crumble, even between parent and child, because you might lend them money and they may not pay it back. And oh, wow. there's that thing. It's That's like, you owe me money. Yeah. Why did you go to fast food? And so there can be that resentment yeah. there. And relationships can be ruined and, and they don't deserve to be ruined. No, over money, yeah. over money. Um, managing risk and insurances. My daughter thought it was a scam. Car insurance is a scam, mom. I said, you need to pay your car insurance. And then she got in a car accident and it was her fault. Guess what? Uh -oh. She realized, wow, car insurance Safe. is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's important. Cars and loans is another uh, uh, money truth. Um, property, real estate, and home ownership, that should be their goal. And I had someone come and speak at a, a meetup I had once. She was 19 and had bought her first home without any help from her single mother. Mm. Uh, and um, and so just to understand that you don't have to be old to get a home or have a thing. Shares, stocks, and the stock market investing. Uh, employment, how important it is to have a job and to get a career, not just a job. Um, business. Okay, some people are business minded. I love, I never thought I would have a business, but I love business. And that's an I think. Income tax superannuation okay and the last one is death and wills okay something wow. that we have to think about that's really thorough sharing. it is, I it love is. It. Yeah. and so that's what's in the course it goes into there's a, a lesson on each of those um and it also gives some ideas maybe of how you can teach different age groups and i'm not talking just about teens you can start at young i have my granddaughters come you'll see a thing of money money chocolates there uh -huh. so when they come and see me um to get one I teach them a little money money truth, truth. yeah a money, a money truth, truth. Mm. because and they're just three to seven years old um start young and teach them because that's what's going to empower them and I had a 17 year old who was a client and she wanted to be an adult because at that age they want to become independent and money is the best way to make your child feel confident um, and stand out from anybody else is to be good with money. And she was so excited to save money for her formal, to pay for her uh, uh, schoolies. And she became very quickly so grateful if her mom paid for something for her, like paid for her nails, because she awesome. knew the value. Mm -hmm. So... Brilliant. Teach your children. It's just, um, it empowers them. And my saying that I'll finish off here is one of the best gifts in life is the wisdom of money. Every child in Australia and America and anywhere in the world will become a money manager. They have no choice in the matter. The only choice is with you as the parent. The parent's choice is whether your child would become a good money manager or a bad money manager. Mm -hmm. And so what, what do you want? What do you I'd want like your to ask the parents in the group, uh, those watching and those that will watch the replay, where are you with your money management? How do you feel about your own money management? And how do you feel uh, where your kids are, whatever stage or age that, uh, that they are at? How do you feel about them now in this moment with their money management? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll start with me and my money uh, management. I know that when I became a single mom, this became a big factor that was important uh, to me. Uh, before that, I didn't realize, but I had a ceiling. We'd go on these family holidays because, oh, there's more money than that ceiling limit in the bank so um it was good we both we both uh, uh, my ex and I both uh, had secure jobs so money came in uh, very smoothly and we both had a mindset of uh, not living in debt 
so which made us uh, comfortable. However, what I didn't realize is that we did have that ceiling and we didn't um, have or come to a space where we could have been a lot more financially uh, stable than we did because we did not have what you mentioned uh, here. So it's so important uh, putting that, that mindset on after becoming a single mom uh, was so important to know and learn and take ownership of money. I did have this mindset of, um, you know, if, if I have, um, if I don't have enough money, I need to go out and make more money, which was great. It allowed me to have a side hustle and funny. We had a little jar, my girls and I, um, we, 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 ha we had our side business that we ran at the time and we put the money in there, which was all exciting. However, possibly we wouldn't have had to go down that track had we planned better and put money aside better and have the right uh, mindset around um, yeah and and budgets focus on income that's their more what's your income the first thing I say is what's your expenses and as we learned in 2020 those who lost their job or, lost, or reduced their income it wasn't it was an expense problem mm. it's all those expenses yeah. that you have coming out and so we need to look at your expenses and make sure that they're doing what you want them to do you know, we tend to, um, uh, yeah, and so we need to, and that's what I do is I take people back. Let's start your financial life again. Let's reevaluate everything you spend your money on. Let's make sure that you're first going to spend it on your life costs first, the things you have to have before you choose your style. Unfortunately, a lot of people choose their style and then complain and play the victim that they can't pay their life costs. Wow. It's just that they're doing it the wrong way around. And that's, that's part of the truth. You have to know the truth. And that's what I teach. And, and in the course that I do, you know, it, you know, you might think, well, what do I teach them? Well, what I just told you, all those things, those are the things you teach them. How should I teach them? It will give you some examples of how to teach them with different age groups. Um, when should you teach it? As well as where can you teach it? And, you know, we already know who we need to teach it to and why, but some people need to know the how um, and the when to teach it. And so that's what the, um, the webinar next week will go into a, a bit more. And then again, do you recommend, course, yeah. Do you recommend parents coming in with their kids or is it sufficient for parents to just come in themselves? And do you, do you empower parents to, um, to, to teach their kids this or impart yeah. this knowledge yeah. to the kids? they're more than welcome to come on. Um, it is recorded. And so if you wanted to have that um, after uh, the attendance, then I'll be happy to give that because it may be, you know, well, they're at school <laughs> at yeah. 12 noon, hopefully. At 12 noon. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's yes. What you want them to be. Yeah, that's right. And so, um, but it will give you some great discussion points. And like I said, for $17.18, uh, that's a no brainer. That's to have the information that you need that the schools are not teaching your kids mm. um, that you can and you will learn so much yourself you'll think oh I wish I had this oh and so you'll get all these little gems and it will introduce you to kind of a spending plan in a you know because there is a huge difference and I'm so glad that I stopped budgeting 19 years ago um, and yeah, all my kids, as soon as they turned 14 and started working, they got a spending plan. Hence, my daughter bought her first car at 17 as soon as she got her, yeah. um, her things. And so you want to teach it so it becomes a normal thing for them to be financially weird. We're That's teaching correct. our children to be financially weird. So let's we all get financially weird, weird. <laughs> and not uh, financially, what's the other? Normal. We don't normal. want to be normal because that's because debt. normal means debt and normal means um, not yes. having enough and spending more not than you're earning and have, not having a plan. Yeah, and not having having stress and anxiety. Yeah. Financial peace is what we're aiming for. Not that is what financial is. freedom. Learn exactly. so much already, Sherry. And in, in Empowered Parenting, it is about empowering parents because we cannot give what we don't have. So if you no. are trying to impart financial peace to your kids, let's learn those skills uh, for ourselves. 
Uh, I can't wait to buy your program, Sherry, because I can see the wealth I can sh share and impart to my to my girls. So please, please put the link for us to purchase that program uh, in the comment section. And also, we can't wait to join you on your event happening next yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Thank and you for joining us. Yeah. So much wealth already. And we can't wait to learn more and, and really impart that. Such a big area of our life finances I know how much of stress it's brought onto my own life and I as a mom would absolutely love to impart that financial piece to my kids yes and I every month I start a new eight-week course for parents or like say I have young ones I have ones who are preparing to get married um, all this and and so it's a great investment of your time and a little bit of investment in money that you can educate yourself so that you can when your kids turn 14 and get their first job, you can teach them how to create a spending plan. And that is, the again, one of the best gifts you can give is the wisdom of money and to give them a tool that actually works and tells them their truth. Yeah, yeah, absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Sherry, for joining us on our group. And we can't uh, wait to, uh, to dive into your program and uh, really that financial piece. Let's go uh, parents, financial peace is what we are here to impart uh, to our kids along with uh, managing emotions and and um, finding our way through relationships. Uh, finances play a big role. So thank you. Thank you for joining us. If you found value, hashtag value. If you have a question, put your question down here uh, and we will endeavor to answer your question. If you've got a challenge that you're facing, a relationship challenge because of money, uh, private uh, message myself or Sherry and we are here to help and support you. Thank you for joining us, Sherry, and we look forward to having you again on our group. Thank you. Thank you.